Episode 2, the counter-narrative. Full episode. It's not a clap. That was the most feeble clap. Hi guys, welcome to The Counter Narrative. This is The Antidote to Woke. My name's Richard Willett. This is where we cover some weird and strange stories from the world of the woke and show you just how mad the world is going. But it's okay if we laugh at it. It might just go away or something. So the first story this week is clean air can cause global warming. Right, okay. So you want clean air, but at the same time, You don't, because it's causing the thing that you don't want it to cause in the first place. Right. So this is Science Magazine. In a paradox, which this world is now, cleaner air is now adding to global warming. I don't know what to do then, because then I make it messy with my car. Then you complain, and then I stop driving my car, and then you say it's just doing it anyway. So are we fucked? Let's have a look. It says, using an array of satellite observations, it makes it sound legit, doesn't it? Because you and I haven't got an array of those things. Researchers have found that the climate, inf- climate influence of global air pollution has dropped by up to 30% from 2000 levels. No one really knows what that means. That's just numbers. But it goes on to say, the cleaner hair has effectively boosted the total warming from carbon dioxide emitted over the same time by anywhere from 15 to 50%, estimates Johannes Quais, great name, a climate scientist at somewhere I can't pronounce, university, and lead author of the study. As air pollution continues to be curbed, he says, there is a lot more of this to come. So basically he's saying that the cleaner air is making it worse. Could clean air be causing global warming? And this is from Mint Lounge. So you know this is legit. I don't know what Mint Lounge is, but it it, it sounds trustworthy. Scientists have discovered a major paradox in nature. These bloody scientists, they don't have a day off, do they? They're just running around looking at viruses and all sorts. Never a day off, and then the weather. While pollution cools down the world, clean air accelerates global warming. I don't want to do it anymore. Although the reduction of airborne fine particles or aerosols is good for public health, it is thought to prevent the deaths of several million people annually. It is detrimental for global warming. So what do they say there? What's the counter narrative to this? Well, on one hand, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. It's all your fault, whether you do it or you don't do it. But on another point, this is kind of a eugenics tinge to this, which I really liked. Sort of. Liked is is a strong word. Although the reduction of airborne farm particles, or aerosols, is good for public health, and is thought to prevent the deaths of several million people annually, they don't want that. The eugenics cult behind all of this nonsense. That's a bad thing for them. So it's it's, it's good it prevents death, but not really for us, because we won't get a bit of death. And then they go on to say, but all those people that don't die, that's actually detrimental to the planet. <laughs> it's, um, it's good for public health and is thought to prevent the deaths of several million people annually. Good thing. But on the downside, it's detrimental for global warming and the planet. So again, coming back to what we said in um, the previous episode with the one about the BBC climate change denier guy Lance who was waffling on to his dad, poor dad in the car, he's trying to drive him back to school. Back and forth to school, Lance was waffling on in his ear about climate change and and, and talking down to his dad as if his dad was a child. Because he was a denier, apparently. Um, This is harking back to the book that I mentioned in the last um, episode, The uh, First Global Revolution, and at the very end of that they talk about using these things to um, manipulate and move the Overton window, which is what the whole woke um, push is about, is moving the Overton window, so these sort of weird, contradictory behaviours and this nonsense is just acceptable. You can accept two things that don't mash together, this cognitive dissonance becomes normal. So, and in the back of that, so one of their things was using global warming, using climate change fanning. They want you to believe that humanity is the greatest risk to humanity itself. That's what this is all about. 
Humanity is the greatest risk to humanity itself. And that's what all this nonsense is about. But I love this bit in here where they kind of like go, well, it's a good thing that it prevents a lot of deaths. But preventing a lot of deaths, on the other hand, is really detrimental to the planet. So you've got to choose you or the planet. And that's what it's coming down to. Oh, how did we get here? This is the world. This is planet Earth. So that's the first the first story, and the counter narrative to that is you're to blame, and whatever you do, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Clean air causes global warming. Dirty air causes global warming. So story two on today's episode of the counter narrative. Eat grasshoppers, don't eat meat. Now I've seen Robert Downey Jr. pop his little head out uh, to support this. And he's got a jar, I think, of his, if you look on Twitter, of eating bugs. Of course he doesn't eat bugs. He goes to the highest paid restaurants you can go to. He stays in the most expensive restaurants. What is going on? Could grasshoppers really replace beef? What do you mean? So they want us to stop eating beef. They want us to stop eating things that are good for us, in moderation, like everything. For most people in Europe and the US, the idea of eating crickets and grasshoppers can seem revolting. Yes, it does. It really does. Because we don't need to. But they are a popular snack in parts of Africa and Asia. Parts of Africa, probably, where they've got very little money or even housing or even have anywhere to live, so they eat what they can. They, they can't pop down to Lidl and get a packet of Pringles. Can they? Not only are they packed with nutrients, but they are, har- are less harmful to the climate too. Can you see a, an ongoing trend here? You've got to eat grasshoppers. Because it's getting warm and cold outside. And clean air. And dirty air cause global change. Global change? I've just combined the two. Global warming and climate change into one word. Goes on to say, the air in my family home in Uganda was filled with a distinct aroma, not dissimilar to the smell of beef being grilled. It was December 2000, and my sister Maggie, I love that they put these stories in here, they're fantastic, was frying grasshoppers. So she's like, is that beef or is that grasshopper? I can't tell. If I could just get a whiff from the kitchen in Uganda. Whiff from the kitchen, and I'm like, oh, what's she cooking? I really hope it's beef. I bet it's grasshoppers again. Some of them are still alive. You just hop around in your mouth. As they sizzled and steam arose from the pan, my taste buds tingled. Mmm, getting horny. I couldn't wait to eat the delicious snack. That sounds disgusting, and that sounds like you're lying. Um, This wasn't my first experience of eating grasshoppers. I used to eat them regularly during my childhood. You got the kids sitting there, got them panging. I got some Dairy Dunkers today. Oh, I really like Dairy Dunkers, but sometimes I get on my fingers and a bit sticky. What have you got, Pascal? It's hopping about in the box. It's not even dead. Um, that wasn't his first experience. He used to eat them regularly as a child in Uganda. Grasshoppers are a nutritious delicacy and much sought after snack. Well, sought after, if that's what you mean by chasing them down the street. So this is why eating grasshoppers is clearly going to save the planet and reduce carbon emissions down. That's what we want, we want them down. Not clean air because it puts up global warming. Down, up or down, it doesn't matter. Change is the problem. Peter Alexander, a senior researcher in global food security at the University of Edinburgh in the UK, estimates that I might have reduced the carbon emissions from my diet by a factor of 10. If you take that out and you fart less, you are doing so. Don't fart. That's what we're getting from here. The, 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 the under, underlining story is don't fart. Stop farting. Hold it in. The less farts you do, the longer the planet's going to carry on. Okay, I don't want to hear you farting. I can smell you farting from here. And you've been eating beef again, Pascal. Have you been eating beef? Because I can smell you from here. So can all of those. He goes on to say, before we, we leave Pascal, 
What we choose to eat really matters for the emissions associated with our diets. Again, the counter narrative and the underlining narrative here is that you are to blame for what you're eating. Don't eat food that's good for you. Eat stuff that's going to leave you probably about six stone underweight, not feeling so well. Don't have a balanced diet, eat grasshoppers. Especially don't eat meat because they do farts. And you'll fart, the cows fart, and then we're all just going to die. Climate change. Doing science. So this week's Virtue Sickness Superstar is a lady that's been gunning for this award for a while. She's one of those people that you just look at and you think, I wish that I was more like them. I wish everybody was more like them. I wish babies were more like them. I wish animals were more like them. She's got a new book out. Uh, she's the current Prime Minister of New Zealand. She's done a wonderful job over the last 48 months of um, keeping people in their house and terrifying them. Her book is subtitled Leading the Way with Empathy. Because you need to know how wonderful this person is. She is virtuous and she is this week's Virtue Sickness Superstar. Have an award. So guys, this has been the counter narrative, the antidote to woke. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and leave some comments below. Thank you for joining me. Please remember to laugh at all this nonsense and madness. Keep smiling. See you soon. Take care. Goodbye.